Hey, hey, welcome back to my vlogs and videos channel, Grace Notes. I'm Grace. These are my notes. I post new videos every other day, so click that little bell and the subscribe button. Help my channel to grow. I so appreciate it. So here we are back at Fun Monday because Monday should always be fun. Today's fun is story time. I don't know, I was just thinking about this and I thought, hmm, maybe that'll be my Monday vlog. Story time. Fun fact about me, I was very extremely horribly terribly shy growing up. I know, hey? You would never know that today. But as a kid, I was just extremely shy. I think probably because I was creative. Hmm. Other kids my age were on sports teams, they were joining 4-H clubs, they were in church groups. I was in my parents' basement playing with music studio equipment. Singing, playing, writing songs, that was my thing. And when I wasn't doing that, I was playing with horses and dogs. A lot of things have not changed. I still play with music equipment, write songs and sing, and play with horses and dogs. I'm just loud about it now. When I was really young, I loved horses and I spent my life pretty much trying to be one. <laughs> my mom would call me in for dinner and I'd answer her with a whinny. And then I'd come running with this sort of lopsided sideways sort of lope. I could run fast like that though and I could jump really high. Hey, it works for horses, so I thought it would make me more like them. I outgrew that eventually. <laughs> Thank goodness. I started riding and training horses instead of trying to be one. But who knows, maybe all of that subconscious study of horse behavior, trying to be one, actually gave me a bit of an edge. I was never really good at breaking horses though. The basic training, the breaking, I was never really good at that. My skill has always been in restoring abused or spoiled horses. So there was this one time, I was at my brother's place. He was just opening a new business. He was opening a restaurant. It was summertime and school was out. So my parents went to help him set up his restaurant to get ready to open for business. And I went along too because I kind of didn't have a choice. I think I was about 12 years old and I couldn't really do a lot in terms of helping them set up things, but I did what I could, but then I was bored. And it's not like it was a vacation and we could go and do fun things as a family. Everybody was busy working. So my brother saw that I was bored out of my craw and he suggested to call his brother-in-law who had some horses and maybe we could go for a ride. So I was excited about that. My brother's brother-in-law, let's just call him Wes, because that's his name. Wes and his kids come to the restaurant, they come pick me up and we head off to their farm. Now Wes is a bit of a character. He's a bit of a joker, likes to mess with you a little bit, and his kids are apples that didn't even fall from the tree. So all the way on the drive out there, they were cracking jokes about this horse they were gonna put me on. So they're giggling and they're laughing. Yeah, we're gonna put you on Prince. <laughs> snicker, snicker. Yeah, you'll like Prince a lot. <laughs> snort, snort. So I started thinking, what is the deal with this Prince horse? Well, I quickly learned what the deal was with this prince horse. <laughs> he had no forward gear. Okay, so when you ride a horse, it's very simple. Your feet are the accelerators and they give cues for direction. Your hands are the brakes and your steering wheel, essentially. And that is horseback riding 101. So we pull onto the yard and the first thing I see is a bunch of horses all saddled, ready to ride, tied up outside the corral. But there's one horse, all saddled and ready to ride, but he's standing inside the corral. And Wes points to this lone horse and he says, well, there he is, that's Prince. And I look at Wes and I'm like, why is he in there? And I don't get an answer. So I'm starting to get a little bit worried. Is this horse some kind of a wild, crazy bronc or something? Is my life in danger here? Wes assures me that he's fine. He's not gonna buck or anything like that. The kids ride him all the time. So I'm giving a little bit of a side eye as I go inside the corral to meet this prince horse. And I notice that there's quite a crowd of kids and adults alike 
and they're all hanging on the rail and they're kind of snickering and giggling and smiling at me like they're waiting to see a show. And I'm really starting to wonder, what is the deal? So I'm sizing up this horse as I'm approaching him and he's a nice looking horse. He's saddled, he's ready to ride, he looks calm. He's not stopping, he's not moving away from me, he's just standing there. So I approach Prince and I give him a little pet and introduce myself. I talk to him nice and calmly and I do something called a breathing greeting. It's actually breathing into the horse's nostrils. That is an old Indian trick and they used it to tame wild mustangs. And yes, it works. It's really just keen observation because if you watch how horses greet each other, they blow into each other's noses and that's how they determine if they're meeting a friend or a foe. Prince didn't seem to mind me at all. He didn't stomp his feet or shake his head or shift his weight or pin his ears back. Some things to be aware of if you ever try to give a breathing greeting to a horse that you don't know. <laughs> if a horse looks like this when you approach him, you probably shouldn't do that. So the crowd on the fence has grown even more <laughs> as I am in the middle of this corral with his horse. Seeing that Prince didn't have any particular reaction to me tells me that maybe I'm not a friend to him yet, but I'm definitely not a threat. So we're cool and I get on him. And that is when I discovered what's the deal with this horse because I asked him to step forward and Prince took a step back. What the heck? And the crowd on the fence erupts into giggles and laughter. I asked Prince to go forward again and he takes several steps backwards. And the crowd breaks into laughter. This is really funny to them. Not so funny to me though, because like I said, I am a shy kid and I get embarrassed really easy. It's not cute and funny to me. Being embarrassed for a shy kid is the worst thing ever. So I try to get this horse to go forward one more time and he goes backwards again. So I look over at this very amused crowd. I know my face is many, many shades of red. And I say to Wes, what is the deal with this horse? Why won't he go forward? Oh, don't worry about him. He's just a stupid horse. Does that to everybody. Only reason I keep him around is because the kids like him, but he belongs in a dog food can. Well, he can't be that stupid because he's got you fooled. Because it was clear to me that this horse didn't arrive that way. He had been a properly trained, rideable horse at one point. So what happened? to change that. Horses are smart, you know. The dumbest horse is way smarter than you think. Cause most horses would really rather just be out grazing in the pasture than having to be ridden and do work or to carry a rider on a trail they've seen a gazillion times. Horses get bored. So this horse was primarily ridden by the kids and he obviously devised this backing up technique. If they couldn't get him to go forward, then they just got off and unsaddled him and put him back in the pasture, basically rewarding him for doing this. So Prince wasn't stupid at all. He just knew how to get his way. So Wes tells me, don't worry about that horse. It was just a joke, right? We've got another horse saddled up, you can ride him. And I was like, no, nah, I think I want to stay here and work with Prince, if you don't mind. So Wes just kind of shrugs and says, okay. Nobody's ever been able to ride him, but suit yourself. And off they go on their ride and the crowd disperses. And all that's left are two little kids that are just sitting there watching, waiting to see what I'm gonna do with this horse. And the first thing I do is have a little chat with Prince. Listen to you, I know your game, I know what you're doing, and I know that you know what you're supposed to do. So let's just get on with that now, shall we? Because you are not getting away with this with me. And then I ask Prince to go forward, and of course, he steps back. This battle of wits was on and going. And clearly this was gonna take a lot more savvy and persuasive conversation. And I learned that Prince had probably been carrying on this charade for quite some time. For most horses, backwards is a very unnatural gait, right? It's not something they generally like to do. But Prince was very agile at backing up. He was agile and he was confident. I have never before or since ridden a horse that could trot backwards, but Prince, did pretty much just that. So what to do? I'm in this thing now. Cause like I said, I didn't much appreciate this setup and the joke and all of the embarrassment and all of that. That really was not sitting happy with me. And I really wanted to prove Wes and all those people that were laughing at me wrong, but Prince kept proving them right. <laughs> <laughs> However, I knew that it was not because Prince was a stupid horse, it was because he was smart. So after struggling with Prince for a while and going backwards and backwards and backwards, I just stopped him for a minute and tried to assess the situation. And the little peanut gallery that was still hanging on the fence calls out and says, just give up on him, he's a stupid horse. 
And that's when I remembered a tip that I got from an old cowboy friend of mine. Anything you want to do, you try to make what you want to do seem like it's the horse's idea. And as I was sitting there pondering that, I realized what I needed to do. Prince obeyed every command that I gave him beautifully. The only thing he wouldn't do was go forward. He stopped on command, he turned on command, and he also knew the command to back up. So then, instead of asking him to go forward and letting him decide that he was gonna go backward, I started asking him to go backward. So now going backward was my idea, and he executed that command flawlessly. So I had him backing up on command for a little while, and then I stopped him and let him think about it. And he was definitely thinking about it. His ears were twitching, and he turns his head, and he looks at me with his squinty little eye like, what's this now? You're asking me to back up. So then, seeing that he was thinking about it, I asked him to go forward, and he responded by stepping backward. I immediately switched code and asked him to back up again, making it my idea to go backwards so that perhaps his idea might be to go forward. Reverse horse psychology, that's what I was trying to do. So I remember it was a pretty warm day and Prince was starting to get kind of sweaty because he was working way harder than he had for quite some time. <laughs> so after another bout of bagging him up, I stopped him again and let him think about it again. And then I asked him to move forward again. And for the slightest moment, he didn't do anything. He didn't move forward or back, but you could see the wheels in his head were turning. I know that if this horse could have spoken human words, he would have said, no, no, this always works. This always works. I back up and then they get off and they leave me alone. Why is this person still riding me? And as soon as I felt his weight shift backwards, I asked him to back up again. No, nope, buddy, I told you, backing up is my idea. So I continued to do this for quite some time. This horse had frothy sweat on his shoulders already, but he was really, really stubborn and he really didn't want to give up this tactic. This technique had worked for him so many times before and it was the only technique he knew, thank goodness, he hadn't figured out that he could buck somebody off. Cause that pretty much would have put him in a dog food can. Horses that buck are dangerous and you can't keep dangerous horses around kids. So we were kinda at an impasse. <laughs> I was ruining all Prince's plans to be the backup horse, but he still had no intention of going forward. It was only a matter of time before the riding party got back and I would be out of time to try and work this situation out of him. Horses have a monocular field of vision, right? Which means that their eyes are on the side of their head and they see what's on this side out of this eye and what's on this side out of this eye. And they have the capacity to have a 360 degree view with just a slight turn of their head. Horses actually have to concentrate to look into their binocular field of vision, which is what's in front of them. And they also have a couple of blind spots. They can't see what is right directly in front of them, like what's under their nose. And they also can't see what's directly behind them. And that's why you should always let a horse know when you're walking behind them because they can't see you. And if they feel at all threatened, they will take a kick first, see what they kicked after approach to the situation. Anyway, the fact that Prince could not see directly behind him became my advantage in this battle of wills. Because while he was getting really tired of backing up, he still insisted on doing that because he had a clear path behind him. So my next tactic was to force trust in my direction rather than taking his own. And I aimed his backside at the fence and he nailed it. When Prince's butt hit that fence, it surprised him some. Oh yeah, he jumped forward. <laughs> but then I wouldn't let him go forward. I got him backing up again and I backed him straight into the lean-to that was in the middle of the corral. Oh my, where did that come from? And then I aimed him for the water tub that was also in the corral and I sat his butt down into that. Woo, that water was cold. Stop and think about this, Prince. Maybe we should go forward now, what do you think? I asked him to step forward and this time, he took a very, very tentative, careful step forward. And the moment he did, I praised him to the sky, told him what a fantastically good, smart, wonderful horse he was, patted him on his neck, gave him a horse cookie, and then I asked him to go forward again. First, at a nice, easy walk, then I got him up to a trot, then I got him up to a lope. I stopped him a few times and I did ask him to back up again just to let him know that backing up is okay. You just only do it when you're told to. Turns out Prince was a beautiful horse to ride. He was smooth, he was fast, he was agile, he was sure-footed. He would have made a great 
4-H horse. So there I was, riding Prince, loping perfect figure eights around this corral when the riding party got back. And I saw them all staring at me and all of their mouths were like, Wes actually stopped his horse and dismounted. <laughs> he came over to the fence and he says, how the heck did you manage to do that? I walked Prince over to the fence where he was standing and I looked at him, probably a little bit more smug than a 12 year old should be addressing an adult. And I said, you make the bad things hard, you make the good things easy. Thank you all for supporting my channel and watching my vlogs. This little channel is moving forward because of you guys, so mad love. Well, I am all for now, but I will see you all again on Wednesday. I love you all. Take care of each other. God bless you. Mwah.